Hi, this is Seth Lewin with DCTV News. I'm sitting here with Chuck Block, the former historian of Delta College. Hello, Chuck. How are you? Yep, good. How are you? Good, great. Um, all right, so it's been 50 years since Delta's been in Stockton. Um, what does Stockton mean to the community to you? Well, first of all, to be really clear, I mean, uh, Delta is, as the Sandwich and Delta College has been uh, by name in Stockton since 1953. But the roots of the college go back to 1935. And uh, originally, when the college was established, it was uh, part of Stockton Unified School District, and then we had a cooperative arrangement with the University of Pacific, then called College of Pacific. And uh, actually, the junior college really was uh, virtually the lower division of College of Pacific. Mm -hmm. and that meant that Stockton Unified didn't have to build a junior college, and uh, they also got the benefits of a higher enrollment during a tough, a tough time in the country with the Depression. And uh, that's where the college got its start. I think it's meant a lot uh, to the community. I mean, there's, there's too much to say really in just a few minutes, but uh, tens of thousands of people really uh, in this community and all the entire county in parts of uh, the, uh, the Rio Vista School District area, the St. Paul River Island School District, uh, which is uh, in a nearby county in Solano County and in Sacramento County, Galt, people have all come to Delta, and even the Mother Lode. You've got people from Calaveras County here as well. And uh, so that over the years, thousands of people here have attended Delta, and it's given them tremendous opportunities. For me, for, for, for example, I was a student here mm -hmm. under the old Stockton College days, oh wow. and uh, before it became Sandwich and Delta. And uh, I did my first two years here before going on to other universities uh, to complete my education. And I feel in many ways, uh, uh, my best education was right here. Yeah. And uh, in, we had small classes, we had mm -hmm. outstanding faculty members. And when I had the opportunity to come here as a teacher myself, I felt really honored and uh, to be coming back here. I just, I love the college. And for me, it's meant uh, a great deal. So not only were you a historian, but you were also a teacher. Um, have you seen any success stories with students? Well, really many. Uh, I, I really, I benefited from the fact that I had a specialty in California history and in international relations. Mm -hmm. And of course I taught other history classes when I was needed and I taught other political science classes when I was needed. Yeah. And when I think back now uh, on a question like that, um, I've actually got students who are posted overseas who uh, worked uh, uh, for the United States Consular Officer. Uh, I have other students who work in international business and trade and some who are working for uh, uh, non-governmental non organizations uh, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And they started here at Delta College. And there's many people like that. And we really don't uh, fully appreciate it because yeah. it's hard to track some of these students and appreciate what they've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, numerous students that I've taught in history, uh, in addition such as California history or United States history, uh, have gone on obviously into teaching, into law, and to uh, some are writers, and uh, ju they're just many, many people have come out of Delta. And one of the things that I've always hoped is that what might come out of this current 50th uh, anniversary we're celebrating is that we reestablish uh, a recognition of our outstanding graduates. Yeah. That used to be done. And uh, somewhere along the line, I, I don't know whether it was because of, uh, of the lack of organization or maybe the institutional lack of interest, that was abandoned. Mm -hmm. But that really, I think, needs to be rekindled because there's yeah. just a lot of good people here that need to be recognized that would inspire uh, students as they enroll in Delta. And now we're about to announce these new students. Can you, is there any like words of advice you'd like to give them? Well, I, I know that I took full advantage of what Delta had to offer when I came here. And uh, uh, one thing that uh, uh, I feel that students miss the boat on today is that uh, they get really worried about grade point average. Yeah. And uh, I've noticed people, I, I, I look at uh, oh, what people have to say who come out of Delta and, oh, I had a 4.0 or I had a whatever I had. Uh, I didn't have a 4.0. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a 3.0. And uh, the, uh, it wasn't, uh, the grade you get in a class is not as important as whether you're learning something from a really good instructor. And uh, I, I've 
I've heard that students sometimes flee classes when they find out they get that first midterm yeah. and they don't do well, they, they bail out. And I think that's a mistake. I think yeah. sometimes you better, are you really learning, however, from that instructor? Uh, maybe that's more important. But uh, I understand the pressures that go on in society today for grade point and so on, but mm -hmm. uh, that I think is one mistake they make. Yeah. And the other I think is to, to be in a hurry to get through some kind of a specific program, some technical program or certificate program, whatever it might be, or just get the AA degree and get out. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's, to me, it's important not only to be in your special area of say science or math or in engineering, but also to have kind of a, a broad education so that yeah. it kind of separates you from other people mm -hmm. to have a breadth to your education so yeah. that you know something about literature and the arts, yeah. politics and history. And that's what's going to separate you in the years to come, uh, separate you from the pack, so to speak, because you're going to have a richer perspective on life to bring more into it. Yeah. And I would hope students would think about that when they come here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd li also like to see generally, I I'm impressed, uh, I want to digress for a minute, but I work in the archive a lot in, in uh, Goldman Library. And um, the um, I get to go through the library and I go to the librarians and they, we keep it under lock and key and they let me in and, and uh, I go to work. And um, the, uh, this is all voluntary on my part and other people come in with me who are interested in college history. And uh, I'm always impressed by the numbers of students are in Goldman, both on the ground level and on the second floor, mm -hmm. who are quietly studying, uh, either individually or in those group study rooms. And that really impresses me because that recalls my memories of what yeah. Stockton College was and what Delta College was like when I left. Mm -hmm. And for a while there, I think it kind of lost that, but I think it's coming back. Great. And, and it's, I, it, it's very impressive, really. So um, is Delta's college history unique? Very unique. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't understand how unique it is. Yeah. The, uh, there's a lot to be said there. Uh, first of all, the fact that the Delta College uh, was, was the way it was established, let's begin there uh, briefly. Uh, the fact that the college was uh, joined with the College of the Pacific mm -hmm. uh, was very unique. It was the uh, first instance of that happening in California. And on top of, it had been done, it was done in two other states as well, where uh, private schools conjoined with a public school district to create a junior college as their lower division. And the really the history of it goes back to not 30 1935, but 1934. Pacific experimented with having a college uh, that would admit students a little bit under their normal uh, entrance requirements. And that didn't work out so well. Then the next year they came back to Stockton Unified and said, let's try this. Let's be your lower division and students can earn the AA degree here. And then th those who might be so inclined can go on to Pacific or elsewhere. So they th that was very unique. And what was unique about it is that, that Pacific was a private school. And on top of that, it was nominally Methodist. So you have a religious school, a school established at least with religious roots conjoining with a public institution such as Stockton Unified. Mm -hmm. And special legislation uh, was passed by the state of California to allow this to happen because tuition money was being paid by the taxpayers to Pacific to keep those students in school those two years. So that's very unique. Yeah. And then another thing that's unique about Delta is when it was formed 50 years ago in 1963 as an independent area college, it was the first one to break away from a unified school district. There were, there were about four school districts that were looking at that possibility at that time, and Delta was the first to do it. Yeah. And therefore, again, legislation had to be passed to set up an arrangement whereby the college could form mm -hmm. and Stockton Unified could continue, continue to manage it yeah. until the graduating class of 63 was out. And that's also something worth noting. This 63 celebration is the last group of students that have the 1963 Stockton College Diploma. Wow. And, uh, and now in 64, as we begin to celebrate the rest of this anniversary, we'll have the first class that graduated as Stanley Delta College. Wow. So that, that's kind of, th those are sort of unique things. And, uh, and there's a lot of threads that run through the history of, of Delta, yeah. uh, right down to just the Mustang. Yeah. And w when, you, when you start looking at what happened there, here's another unique thing. Uh, during the Stockton Unified School District uh, operation of the college, their management of it, 
There was a point where they ran out of room after World War II. They didn't have a pl place to house their students. So they bought a site of some land that's now UOP South Campus. And they put temporary buildings on it that became permanent. Uh, they weren't torn down until after Delta left. And uh, they housed high school students there along with the junior college students who were just next door to four-year college students. And uh, the, uh, that was kind of a, a unique mm -hmm. thing that they, they attempted at that time. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, during that period, they adopted as their uh, mascot, they had been the Tiger Cubs, because University of Pacific or College of Pacific were the Tigers. They were the Tiger Cubs. Well, when they did that, they said, we better change our name slightly yes. so that the, uh, every high school kid from Stockton went to Franklin, to Edison, and Stagg for in Stockton High School for uh, two years, uh, well, rather, excuse me, their last two years were spent on this, the junior college campus. Everybody was together on the same campus. So they had to change mascot names. So they went away from Tiger Cubs, and they said, well, we'll call the, the, the college teams Mustangs, and we'll call the high school teams Colts. Yeah. And that's how that started. Yeah. Well, the Mustangs and the Colts. Of course, when Delta became independent, we kept the Mustangs yeah. and that part of it. And, uh, and there was even, uh, and of course, then the school colors changed. And I've got to tell you a fun story about the school colors, if we have time. Do we have time, Seth? No, actually, oh, okay, uh, we're, we're out of time. Yeah, okay. but that's great information. Okay, Thank good. you so much. Okay, good. Um,